Today we're going to update the firmware on this Yezu FTX1. Now you can find these instructions on the Yezu website. They're fairly simple to do. I wanted to walk through them and do them on video just because I've been doing a lot of videos about this radio. I'm actually recording about three videos today about this radio. Yezu's already got a firmware version update ever since this uh, this radio was released around the time of Dayton, which was three weeks ago at the time of this recording. And this firmware update has been out for about a week. So it was pretty quick. And I expect more firmware updates. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But these steps should work for any version of firmware, regardless of where you're starting and where you're upgrading to. So let's take a look right now. All right, this is directly from the Yezu website. This is, this is the website right here. Go to yezu.com, scroll down to products, VHF, or I'm sorry, HF radios and FTX1 series is right there in, in at the at the top. And then you click on up, once you get on the FTX1 series page, which includes the field and Optima versions, you can see right there at the top, you get there and you click on updates here. And these are the files that you want right here. So the, the bottom link is the actual firmware, FTX1 USA firmware. This is this top link here in English is firmware update information. This is basically the stuff that they've fixed. Or this is extra. No, that's not even a change log, really. It tells you a little bit about what the file, this file contains. And I've already downloaded the file. And then these are the instructions. So all of this is located right here. I'm not sure what the purpose of this is, actually. This is just telling you that basically, please read the FTX1 series firmware upgrade manual, which is this right here. And it says implements improvements uh, as of May of 2025. That was last month. Improved operation problems. That's not very much. That's not a very good change log. Okay. After installing firmware completely, the FTX1 must be reset. Refer to the FTX1 series operating manual, page 79. Or refer to uh, the firmware manual, which it, it tells you over here. So you have to reset it. So if you've saved any memory channels, it's probably going to wipe them out. F. Y I. This should be more of a change log is what that should be. It's just not. So whatever. Okay, that's fine. So we're going to start here. Okay, and again, this will work for any series. And right here, so I've read through all this and I've done a couple of these steps already. Right here it says format the micro SD card in advance with the transceiver. So we're going to do that in these steps here in just a minute. It doesn't tell you how to do that. It does tell you to look in the manual under using micro SD card in the, uh, described in the owner's operation manual. And I can tell you right now that's on page 64. So the first thing I did was I tried to format. I've got a, I've got a few micro SD cards for some of my cameras. I've got uh, micro SD cards for, a, uh, for my drone. And I don't have very many small micro SD cards. So I took a 64 gig and tried it and it gave me a, a formatting error. Okay, so I opened the manual. I referred back here, I opened the manual. Page 64 says that you can use a two gigabyte micro SD card or a four, eight, 16 or 32 gigabyte micro SD HC card. Okay, I think the HC is just a faster read. I'm not sure what the difference is. I don't really care for the purposes of this. So I dug through my micro SD card holder here that I keep in my camera bag. I found an eight gig and it worked fine. So I got an eight gig micro SD card in here and it works fine and I'm going to show you what to do on that right now because the manual here tells you to format the card but it doesn't tell you how to do it but it does tell you how to do it if you scroll down right here like on page whatever page this is page six page six tells you how to format the micro SD card so we start here at the main menu and we long press this button here and that takes us into the regular deep menu okay and you've got three pages in here page one page two and page three over here page three gives you these options down at the bottom right here and we want to choose extension settings there and then it'll probably start at the top right there but then you can you can use the touch screen or you can use this indicator knob right here the top right knob and we choose sd card and it, you can see it's on format it's going to start at the top of the menu there come down to format click on done i don't know why it says done but this is what uh, this is how you do it. You click on done, and then it says format card, OK or cancel. We choose OK, and we're going to see new format in progress. It only takes a few seconds. There we go. Format completed. 
and then we just back out of that. So that's all you got to do the, to format the SD card. There's, there's really nothing else to it. So let's go over here and start again at the top of this page. So, so we formatted the SD card, and it wants us to look and see what it says. Uh, go into the extension menu, uh, touch forward two times to page three, which is where we just were, and touch soft version. That's going to be the software version that is currently on the radio. So we're going to go here, back into that menu. Uh, yeah, extension setting, that's correct. Soft version. And you can see we are on display version of 01-01. -01. Main is 01-00. And you can, you can see all those here. SDR is 01-03. District is USA. So that's the software version that we're on right now that we're going to be updating from. So it talks about downloading the firmware. And I've already got this zip file. I'll grab this zip file here in a minute. I've got this downloaded to my hard drive on a Windows box. Apologize to some of you who don't like Windows. Not really my problem, but, uh, you know. So we're going to extract that to... I know you guys can't see what I'm doing right now. So I downloaded the zip file. I extracted it to my desktop here. It says, unzip the downloaded file using a PC or Windows OS. Right-click on the downloaded zip. Extract all. The firmware file extension... Extension is SFL, Sierra Foxtrot Lima, in the folder. So I've got the folder, and it's currently titled FTX1 USA Firmware Update 202505. So it's just named 202505. And then inside of the folder, we see these fil files right here. There's four files inside of the folder. This manual that I've been reading to you from the website is also included in here. You can open up that manual. And uh, it's the same manual that is listed that you download from the website. And then you've got these SFL files here. And you can see the bottom one says main. This one says display. And this one says disp boot, display boot. I assume that means so. And they're all about three megabytes. Little, two and a half to three megabytes, something like that. Not very large at all. So we're going to go back over here. And it says copy the firmware to an micro SD card. It should be to a micro SD card. I don't know. I'm a stickler for things like that. <laughs> Copy the file directly under the FTX1 folder. So somehow I'm going to have to get this micro SD card. I hope that now that I've formatted the micro SD card in the Yezu radio, I hope that it that Windows will read it. That's going to be the trick. I haven't tried this yet. So let's try that. So I'm going to put this in my fancy little USB connector there. We're going to see if that comes up. It does. Okay, that comes up right there. So let me bring that window up so you guys can see it. That's the FTX1 folder from the formatted SD card that I just took out of the radio. And you can see right here, it's got capture, mem list, menu, and playlist. And according to these instructions right here, I need to put the firmware in this location under the FTX1 folder. So QSO log is not something I have because I haven't logged any QSOs yet. So we're going to bring this over here. And I got to find, there it is. Okay, so I got to find that. And I got to find these three files. Okay, so those are the three firmware files there. Copy to this location. That's where we put them. Okay, how to update the firmware. Turn the transceiver off. Let me take this out here. And I got to put the micro SD card back in. By the way, here's something that's useful if you haven't seen this yet. You put, you insert the micro SD card this direction, not this direction. I mean, you'll figure it out because as long as you don't force it, you won't be able to put it in this way. So you put it in with the face, what I would call the face of the card facing down or facing towards the back of the radio. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the transceiver off because that's the first step after putting the card back in anyway. And if I were to put this card in now, it would pop up a menu that says uh, proceed to update or something like that. But we're not going to do that right now. So here's what we're going to do. Turn the transceiver off. When updating, remove the battery, which I've already done that, and connect it to an external power source. Now, I've got another video I'm going to talk about this battery and what I think about the battery and some drawbacks about the battery. The battery is USB-C chargeable, but it requires a 15-volt power source with, I think, 250 watts or 450 watts. I can't remember what it is. It requires more of a power source than what your standard USB-C connector is going to give you. I'm going to talk about that in another video. But 
one thing I have learned is that the USB, the um, the gigaparts, the latest gigaparts battery box with the upgraded USB-C charger does charge the battery on this radio. Okay, you can save 5% on that box with the coupon code of KC5HWB, and they put them on sale periodically. I suspect they'll have them on sale next month or in a couple months for Huntsville Ham Fest, but we'll see. Anyway, I've got this plugged in via this cable right now. Here's the battery. Battery's off the radio. I've got this plugged in via this cable, and it's actually running down to the same Gigaparts battery box plugged into power poles, direct, 12, direct to 12 volts. Okay, so that's what I've got plugged in right now. So it says to take the battery out and plug in directly to 12 volts. That's the first step. Turn the transceiver off. I did that. Connect to a power source. Insert the micro SD card. Okay, good. Important, do not skip this section. If the current main firmware is 0100, proceed to step four. That's what it was, right? Yes. Yeah, so if the current... So once you update from this, you probably have, won't have to do this again. If the current version is different from 0100, proceed to step 11. I had to go look again because I, I, there were several numbers in there. Main is 0100, as you saw earlier in this video. I should have rewound my own video, but I didn't. Okay, so we're going to start at step four. Okay, so if you, once you update the main past 0100, which is I think is what we're about to do, then you won't have to do these steps 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. You'll proceed directly to step 11. Okay, if the current ver, uh, main firmware version is different than V01.00, Start from step 11. Okay, so we're going to do this whole thing. So while pressing the QMB, the VM, and the MV buttons simultaneously, all three buttons simultaneously, turn on the transceiver. So that is, I think that's all three of these at the top. QMB, that's this one. MV, and V. So this one here, this one here, and this one here. So one, two, and three. And we're going to power this on. Okay, it says on the screen right there, I know that's small in the window, it says firmware update at the very top right there, and it says insert latest version firmware SD card, touch the screen to continue. But the manual says do not touch the screen, proceed to next step. Okay, okay. Turn the function knob clockwise five clicks or more. The Yezu bootloader screen appears. Okay, turn the function knob five clicks or more. There we go. Okay, there we go. Make sure that the display mark, that the display shows the check mark, then touch update. Do not mark anything other than display. So it wants us to do the display first. And that's exactly what came up. What came up was display is checked here. Main is not checked. It's got a checkbox there. Both of them say ready. And then DSP and SDR say no such file. So there's no update for those today. So there's your, there's your update display main. And it wants us to do only the display update at first. Okay, make sure the display, then touch update. Touch update right here. Do not turn off power. You can see the indicator going right there. It says skipped on main. So we're just updating the display right now, which is exactly what it wants us to do. Again, I, I think this is an initial update because this is factory firmware. Okay, so the display turned off. It says, the update progress indicator is displayed when the firmware transfer begins. Please wait until the progress is completed. Do not remove the SD card until or turn off the transceiver while updating. If the update is interrupted, the transceiver will not operate properly. When the update is complete, the power is automatically turned off, it says right here. Unplug the DC power cord, then reconnect. The power is automatically turned on. Proceed to step 12. Okay, so that's one thing about this radio that I find a little bit, I don't know if annoying is the right word, but strange. Okay, so we're turned off right now. There's no lights, no anything. Every time you apply power to the radio, it comes on autom automatically. And that's what it's telling me to do. It says to remove this, put the power back in right there. It didn't come back on. Okay. My power did not come back on. It said, unplug the DC power cord, reconnect, and the power is automatically turned on. Proceed to step 12. That's what it says right here. This did not happen. I had to press my power button for it to come on. Okay. So, okay. Well, it's on now.
Proceed to step 12. Press the function knob. Press and hold the function knob. Go back into the main menu, in other words. Okay, touch the extension setting. Forward two screens. That's where we're already at. Oh, forward two screens if you're not at the extension setting. Okay. Touch SD card. And then touch done on the firmware update. So it wants you to go in here, touch SD card, and touch done on the firmware update. And then it's checking right there. A list of firmware stored on the micro SD card is displayed, it says, right here in this screenshot. Check mark indicates firmware to be updated. Ready indicates updatable files. No such file, there's no target. And broken file indicates there's some kind of corrupted version. So we have got, clearly, we've got a display update and a main update. So dis the display is V01-02 and the main is V01-04. That's the firmware that we're about to apply to this radio. And it says this one, this time it says it's okay to do both at the same time because it says to go ahead and touch the main and put the checkbox in that one. So that's what we're going to do there. There we go. Now both of those are ready. And it says touch update to update the uh, confirmation screen. To cancel, click cancel. Touch OK. After, if, if we click update, it'll say update and click OK. So we're plugged into power. It says something about do not turn off power. And there we go. All right, you can see the indicator going right now. While that's going, let me tell you about today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Mezzi and Plony Coax. When I take this radio out into the field, most of the time I'll be feeding it with Mezzi and Plony Coax, especially if I'm on POTA. You can save a 10% discount on all Mezzi and Plony Coax connectors, items, tools, everything they have at the link in the description below on the Gigaparts website and on the Mezzi.it website from Italy. If you can't find something on Gigaparts, go to Mezzi.it. Enter the same coupon code, HR2Cables. You'll get 10% off of either website with those coupon codes. Thank you, Mezzi and Plony, for supporting the channel. All right, that one is still good. Okay, so the display finished. You can see it's got a green check mark here now. That one says finished. The main is going. Taking a little bit longer than the first one. Still, yeah, there it's moving. Okay, that took about two minutes maybe two and a half, something like that. And then the radio rebooted and it comes back to this screen. Now, we're going to go back over here. When the update is complete, the power is automatically turned off and then on. That's what it did. Reset the transceiver, see below. Okay. While pressing back and find fast, turn the transceiver on. Okay, so it doesn't tell you to turn the transceiver off, but obviously that's what you have to do. So we're going to go back over here. We're going to turn it off right there. We're going to press these two buttons at the same time, and we're going to turn the transceiver on. And then that's what it says should have. The frequency display will return to 144.0 on the sub side and 7.0 on the main side. That's exactly what happened. Okay, this completes the firmware upgrading process according to the manual. So we're going to go over here and look. So I'm gonna put, <laughs> I've saved one memory channel in here, so not, not a big deal to me. The 3D uh, waterfall is on. I don't have an antenna hook connected right now, obviously. Okay, so we're going to go back in here and look. Go here. Extension. And we're going to scroll down to software version. Now we're on display version V01-02. Main is V01-04. DSP is 01-01. There wasn't an update on that one. And SDR is 01-03. Wasn't an update on those two. So this was a firmware update for the display and the main, not the DSP or the SDR. That's what we did. All successful, working as intended. And we can change back and I can go back into the repeater that I had this programmed in. So once again, this is the first firmware update that Yezu has released since this radio was debuted last month. I'm sure there will be more firmware updates. I'm looking forward to seeing how well this one works and what they actually fixed because there wasn't, it said operating problems. I don't know really know what that means. So uh, check the links in the description below for everything. This should work for every version of firmware update from now forward. Uh, put a comment below. Let me know what other types of videos you'd like to see about this radio, 73.